Hey guys, I'm Kyle from Apex Audio, and today I wanted to walk through the best home studio setup for 2020. And what's so great about this setup is that the gear that's available to us is so easy to use that anyone can really set up a home studio and be able to get a big sound from it. For each piece of gear, you can change it out for something similar or something that works for your budget. But the point is, is that all this gear makes the recording process so much easier so that you can focus on what matters, which is the music. So I'll be sure to give you my recommendation as we go through as well as what is the most bang for your buck on the market right now. And guys, all of this information is available in the How to Record Music at Home ebook, as well as a ton of info on actually recording your music at home. So be sure to check that out on the Apex Audio website. Okay, so we'll dive right in. And the very first thing you're gonna need in your home studio is a computer or a laptop that can handle multi-track recording. Now, the great thing about the time we live in is that most of the computers and laptops out there can handle multi-track recording. And you don't have to worry about whether you're a PC person or a Mac person because you can really record on any platform. Now, in terms of the specs that you'll want in your computer or laptop, here is the minimum that I would recommend. You'll want eight gigabyte RAM, i7 processor and a 250 gigabyte SSD hard drive minimum. And on the topic of hard drives too, you'll want an external hard drive to back up your laptop or computer. And I would recommend to back up once a day or once a week, because if you lose those files, they're gone forever. The next thing you'll need is an audio interface that allows you to connect your musical instruments or your voice to your computer. You can essentially think of an audio interface as an analog to digital converter. It's taking an analog guitar signal or an analog voice signal and turning it into a digital one that the computer can store and recall. For home recording, you can probably get away with a basic two-channel audio interface. If you're recording something like drums, you might need eight inputs or more. For a two-channel interface, I would recommend the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. It's just a really easy entry-level audio interface that'll get you started right away. And for those looking to record drums or something more than two channels, uh, I would get the Focusrite Scarlett uh, 18i20 uh, for eight inputs. The next thing you'll need is a DAW or a DAW installed on your computer, and that will allow you to manage your recordings. There's a lot of DAWs on the market, like Pro Tools or Cubase or Logic. I would actually recommend getting started with Reaper. Reaper is what I use. It is super cheap, very easy to use. It's perfect for my workflow. It'll just get you started right away. When it comes to recording music, you don't wanna listen back on your laptop speakers or even your earbuds. It's not a very good representation of your recorded music, and it'll be hard to kind of hear the little details or the inaccuracies as you're going along. So you'll want some studio headphones, there are open-backed and there are closed-back models. I would recommend getting started with closed-back models, and the reason being it won't bleed into your microphone when you're recording vocals. So my recommendation for headphones is probably the most bang for your buck as well, and that would be the Sennheiser HD280s. They're a really great basic headphone that I think almost everybody's used in their own home studio, so definitely check them out. When it comes to studio monitors, I wanna go just a little bit deeper for a second. There's a lot of different models that come in a lot of different sizes on the market, and it's my preference that I think that you should go for a monitor that's seven inches or bigger. With five inch cones, the KRK Rocket 5s, the M Audio BX 5s, those are great monitors, those are really great monitors, but they're just not quite as full sounding as something that's a little bit bigger. So I would recommend going a little bit bigger and getting a fuller sound out of your monitors. It's for that reason that I would recommend the Yamaha HS series. And if you are looking for the most bang for your buck, there's nothing wrong with the KRK Rocket 5s and the M Audio BX 5s. They're just a little bit smaller. Okay, so when we're thinking about microphones, there's just a million on the market and they come in all shapes and sizes and they can cost from anywhere from 100 bucks to $10,000. That's why I actually think that you should start with renting a bunch of different microphones. That way you'll get to test out a ton of different microphones, you'll get to figure out what works best for your own voice, whether that's singing or screaming, or if you're miking up an instrument. For those of you who are looking for a microphone primarily for voice, whether that's singing or screaming, I would recommend starting with the SM7B. The SM7B is just a great all-around vocal microphone. And if you're looking for something a little bit cheaper to get started with, I would look at the AT2020, that's like your entry-level microphone. And I would even check out the Aston microphones. They are great as well. So that makes up the bulk of what you're gonna need if you wanna record music at home. 
The other little pieces of equipment that you will need are things like XLR cables to hook everything together, instrument cables if you're playing things like guitar or bass. You'll need either a boom mic stand or a traditional mic stand to hold your microphone. And then I would also invest in a basic pop filter as well as a vocal shield just to take down some of that extra noise. Now, this is a little bit extra, but I would consider getting some acoustic treatment for your room or your home studio. It's not completely necessary to have acoustic treatment, but if you're trying to record in a badly treated room, there's a chance you'll hear it back in your recordings. You'll get vocals that sound really boxy or really woofy, and that's just not what we want. So you can do basic things like hanging up carpets or blankets on your wall, just getting as much stuff in the room as you can. I also have a full article on my site on how to build your own acoustic treatment panels. Uh, that's a really good resource. And then of course online, there's a million products for acoustic treatment, but I would actually try to do the best you can with what you have at home. Because even if you have to record vocals in a closet where it's a little bit more dampened, that's not a bad option. And it saves you a ton of cash on spending money on panels. And then one last acoustic treatment pro tip is to get isolation pads in between your monitors and your desk. It'll stop the sound from vibrating through your desk and you'll perceive that as bass. All right, guys, with all of that in mind, you've just set up your very first home studio. You can start to learn to use all of your gear and start recording your music. I just think it's awesome that we live in a time where you can do so much with so little and this studio setup is the perfect base to build your knowledge on so you can start to slowly add gear and tools that will help your creativity. And again, guys, for a full guide and walkthrough on recording your own songs at home, check out my ebook that's available on the Apex Audio website. It's perfect for anyone who's looking to start recording music at home or anybody who just wants to make better recordings. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I definitely want to see those home studio setups. And until next time, have fun making some noise.